are here with Cosmos Darwin to talk about getting started with Azure Stack HCI. Thank you for being here, Cosmos. Thanks for having me. Great. So this week, we had a lot of different announcements about Azure Stack, right? We have like talked about a new Azure Stack per portfolio. Can you talk a little bit about more and explain me and the viewers what we actually have? Yeah, absolutely. So it's been a significant week for the Azure Stack portfolio, right? We've grown it essentially from one product now into a family of three different products. So what folks may have known before as Azure Stack is now what we call Azure Stack Hub. And there are two other new members of the family as well. There's Azure Stack HCI and Azure Stack Edge. So they're a little bit different, so let me sort of explain what each of them does, right? We can start from sort of the, uh, the smallest of them, which is Azure Stack Edge. An Azure Stack Edge device is a cloud-managed appliance. You actually order one from the portal. So you go to portal.azure.com, you order yourself an Azure Stack Edge, it ships to you, and when it arrives, you begin paying a flat monthly fee for what is essentially a server as a service. And so it, you, you get it, it's Microsoft first party hardware, you can use it to do edge computing, and it actually comes with a return label. So when you don't need it anymore, you just send it right back to Microsoft, yeah. and you, you only pay for it. There's no minimum commit, you pay for what you use. Conversely, Azure Stack Hub, right, gives you a full Azure-like private cloud in your data center. It really is Azure in your data center. So you have a local instance of the Azure Resource Manager, ARM, a local instance of the Azure Portal, and you as an operator of an Azure Stack can provide your tenants with a set of subscriptions and then IaaS and PaaS services in your data center. And then the third member is Azure Stack HCI, which is what we're here to talk about today. Okay, that sounds awesome. So Azure Stack HCI. Can you a little bit explain what that is? I have heard like many different things. It runs Hyper-V, it runs Windows Server, but can you give me a little bit more on that, what, how it's actually built? Yeah, absolutely. So the way that an Azure Stack HCI works, right? HCI is hyper-converged infrastructure. Uh, and what you do is you buy hardware from your favorite OEM. So you can be Dell, HP, Lenovo, Cisco, Fujitsu. We're working with all of them to build solutions that run Azure Stack HCI. And then on top of that validated hardware, which is designed according to a reference architecture that we give them, you install Windows Server 2019. And everything that you need for Azure Stack HCI is actually bundled up into Windows Server 2019. It's the only software that you actually need to buy from Microsoft for this. So Hyper-V, the software-defined storage, the software-defined networking, it's all included. And if you have a volume license, then you probably already own this and you get all of those technologies. And the best way to manage each of those technologies is through Windows Admin Center. And we just launched Windows Admin Center version 19.10 this week. Yeah. Using Admin Center, you can not only manage the core infrastructure, but you can also actually connect to Azure Arc and to other hybrid services to augment the investment that you have on-prem and do things that you couldn't otherwise do. Okay, okay, that sounds super interesting. That's like the missing piece we had in those Azure and Azure Stack and Edge services and what's there. Um, so when would I use one? Like what, what is the like the power of Azure Stack HCI? Where is like the use cases for those? It's a great question. So we see a number of different things that customers do with Azure Stack HCI, from fairly small scenarios all the way up to surprisingly uh, substantial sort of you know, uh, enterprise data center type of use cases. For example, it's very common to use Azure Stack HCI to modernize a branch office or, an, or a sort of smaller location. It could be a retail store or a manufacturing facility. And part of the reason for that is that the footprint of Azure Stack actually can start very small. On the other hand, there are a set of use cases that are more data center. So things like virtual desktop infrastructure using Remote Desktop Services 2019 on Azure Stack HCI. You can run shielded virtual machines to get a trusted enterprise virtualization. You can run Microsoft SQL Server on it, right? And the performance is really important in that case because the database is always the most sensitive part of an application when it comes to storage performance. And honestly, you can even use it for bulk scale out storage. We know a lot of customers do that. Uh, they want to take advantage of Storage Spaces Direct. And the easiest way to actually deploy Storage Spaces Direct is as part of an Azure Stack HCI solution. So a whole variety of different things that folks do. It really is general purpose, hyper-converged infrastructure. OK. Yeah, that's great. I saw like some great announcements like with performance measurements where we hit like huge amount of numbers, like industry leading numbers. So if I'm a customer now and I want to build or buy an Azure Stack HCI, what do I do? Like, and what options do I have? Yeah, so the first thing that you need is you need to get a validated solution from one of our partners. So we've been working with over 20 industry partners 
Uh, it's all the major vendors of servers to produce solutions that run Azure Stack HCI. And actually, you can see a few of them here, right? There's a wide variety. There's over 150 different servers that are already validated for Azure Stack HCI. And so you can, whoever your favorite vendor of servers is, whether it's, again, Dell, HP, Lenovo, Fujitsu, Cisco, QCT, or anyone on down the line, including a number of smaller regional vendors, we are working with them to build solutions for those customers that run Azure Stack HCI. And there's a wide, wide variety of hardware. Yeah. So whatever I need, like whatever my use cases are, I can find basically the right hardware. Yeah, that's right. Some of those solutions are specifically tailored for one use case or another. So some of them, for example, are like an all NVMe system, or maybe they'll even have persistent memory as caching. That can give you really tremendous I.O., you know, millions and millions of IOPS from a relatively small cluster. And those are the types of systems that we would expect customers to deploy if they want to use Microsoft SQL Server. Conversely, there are others, in fact, you can see a few of them here, that are actually just ultra dense from a storage perspective. And so you can pack in like more than 100 3.5 inch hard disk drives into a 4U enclosure, which is like an incredible density of storage so that you really get maximum storage per dollar that you're spending. And so what, depending on the use case that, you're, that you need, uh, you'll find different solutions that are tailored toward those. Okay. Yeah, I really, really wish you would have brought me one uh, because I could use ah. that for the, at home. So you, you see, we have a number of these which are like rack mount, they're one U or two U or four U, but they don't all have to be that way. In fact, we have a number of solutions that are surprisingly small, and I did oh, bring wow. one. So this is one of the servers that you can use to run Azure Stack HCI. This is the Lenovo SE350 Edge server. And inside, it's all server-grade parts. And so you'll see it has an Intel Xeon D processor. It has uh, up to 256 gigabytes of DDR4 error-correcting memory. It has dual onboard 10 gigabit networking, which is iWarp RDMA capable. And it, you can pack from four up to eight NVMe SSDs into this thing. And of course, it's compact, it's rugged. Uh, you can even like slip it into your bag and walk around with it, as I've, as I've been doing all week. Um, so if you're familiar with Storage Spaces Direct, or if, or if the viewers are familiar, then they'll, they'll recognize that the actual specs of this device are perfect for hyper-converged infrastructure. They meet the letter of every requirement, um, but they do it in a form factor that is much smaller and lighter than folks may expect. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's actually a great point. But now, you show me that single server. However, for Storage Space Direct and H Azure Stack HCI, I need to cluster them, right? I want the redundancy. So how do I do that? Like, do I still need buy a large switch or something like that? It's a great question. So actually, you do need two of them, right? The minimum starting footprint for Azure Stack HCI is two servers. But with just two of those, you don't need a high-speed switch. You can take two or even actually three, and you can connect them back to back using crossover cables. It's actually really quite straightforward. So you'll see because each of them has dual 10 gigabit networking, you need two 10 gigabit crossover cables. You'll still want an uplink so that you can connect to the outside world and do management and things like that. Uh, but it means the minimum footprint and the minimum cost for this bill of materials is actually quite small because you can connect them back to back. And it's actually pretty easy to set up. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, if you like, look at the small store or even if you're on the road and you just need like, a, high, like, a high available solution and you still want to run some powerful workloads on it, yep. that's it, right? Yeah, so let me show you just how easy this is to set up because okay. this has been one of our huge investments in Windows Admin Center, specifically version 19.10 that we've been showing off this week, is how do you take these two servers and turn them into an Azure Stack HCI. So can I, sh want me to show Absolutely. you? Absolutely, let me show Yeah, so let's take a look now at Windows Admin Center version 1910. So we'll start off, Windows Admin Center, as you may know, runs in your browser, and you'll see there's a new solution now called Cluster Creation. Now you can use this to deploy actually lots of different types of clusters. Uh, so you could even deploy a classic failover cluster if you wanted, but for, for this demo, let me show you hyper-converged infrastructure. You'll see that the experience takes the form of a multi-stage workflow that's going to guide me through every step of the process to set up Azure Stack HCI. There are a few prerequisites, like installing Windows Server, but I've already done that. So the first thing I need to do is give the credentials that I'm going to use to manage these servers. So those are my credentials. And then I'll just point Windows Admin Center at each of the servers that I'm going to use to manage. In this case, I've named them Edge HCI 1 and Edge HCI 2. And you'll see that it goes out and finds those servers. And you can see right away they're running Windows Server 2019, the very latest. And they are, in fact, two of these Lenovo SE350 Edge servers. At this point, if there were any roles and features that I needed to install, I could do that. But in, in this case, they're already installed. So the next step is networking. Now, as we said, each of these two servers has dual 10 gigabit networking, which we're going to be using for that critical storage spaces direct backbone. 
there's also a one gigabit connection which I'm going to use for management. So I can select that here, and Windows Admin Center will specifically connect over those, which allows me to reconfigure the other ones without any risk of becoming disconnected from the servers. On this screen, I can input all of the key properties that I need for these network adapters. So things like the IP address, or if I needed to apply a VLAN ID, I could do that here. It's very easy. Uh, but in this case, everything looks right. So the final step in terms of networking is to actually create a Hyper-V virtual switch on each of these servers. Now, you'll see this is a sophisticated step, but it doesn't need to be complicated. All of the advanced options are there. I can get to them. So I can do things like uh, turn off the MMQ if there's some reason that I want to do that, or if I want to choose the load balancing alg algorithm that the Hyper-V switch will use, I can do that too. But I don't need to touch any of those options because everything is already set to the defaults that Microsoft recommends. So I just click Next, and that creates the virtual switch on each server. Now it's time to create the cluster. Validating will quickly check that these servers are suitable for clustering, so it performs a comprehensive suite of checks. And I've set this system up so that it, we get a warning. So I can show you that there's actually a report you could download if you wanted to. And you can directly browse all of the different things that we've checked on these servers right here as part of the workflow. So you can easily see uh, what it is that we're warning about or if there's anything wrong. All I need to do to create the cluster is give it a name, like Azure Stack HCI. And then this will go off and actually enable the cluster service and form a Windows Server cluster out of these nodes. And the very last step, the last stage of this workflow, is to enable Storage Spaces Direct. So in each of these servers, I have four NVMe SSDs. This is perfect for Storage Spaces Direct. And if I needed to, like if I was deploying over and over again on the same hardware, I could clean those drives at this point. In this case, I don't need to, because it's a new system. I've never actually used it before. Uh, and so all that's left is for me to enable Storage Spaces Direct. Uh, it's quite straightforward. I click the Enable button. It goes out and does a few things behind the scenes, like it takes the NVMe SSDs from each server and combines them into one software-defined pool of virtually shared storage. And once that finishes running, that's it. I've deployed Azure Stack HCI in just a matter of a couple of clicks and a couple of minutes. Now, we shortened a few of the sequences here, but the end-to-end -end time to actually do this is less than 15 minutes of real-world time. Yeah, that's insane. What you just showed me, I remember setting up my first S2D clusters, and I took me a bunch of PowerShells, I reading a bunch of documentation, making sure I have, like, I, I checked out all the best practices, I have the right settings for everything, and this basically just does all that for me. Yeah, hyper-converged infrastructure is becoming of the normal way that organizations deploy servers on premises. And so we needed to make it more approachable than it was. And there's a few things that go into making it approachable. One thing is that it needs to be really easy to set up and to manage. And so that's what we've done here. The other thing is honestly about making sure that the price point is very low so that organizations, whether they're a Fortune 100 or a small business, have the real opportunity to, to buy and deploy Azure Stack HCI. And so this week, we, I was really actually quite pleased to announce in collaboration with our friends at Lenovo that this system I just showed, yep. the hardware, the two innovative SE350 Edge servers, all of the components, the drives, the processors, the RAM, the cabling, the software, both data center licenses of 2019, all the services that you need, like three years of Lenovo X Clarity Pro, everything that you need to deploy Azure Stack HCI starts at less than $20,000. Wow. So it's really approachable, no matter how big or small your business is. OK. I remember that being the price for a switch, right? Like for a <laughs> 10 gig switch and something like that. So I get really everything. And, and you said you're including the drive, all the storage, and it's flash storage. It's NVMe storage. Absolutely. It's four NVMe SSDs, uh, one terabyte each. Uh, so it's the exact configuration that I showed, actually. It's the Xeon D processor. Absolutely everything, hardware, software, and services that you would need for this starts at a really approachable $20,000, which is critical for these branch office and edge kinds of use cases, where because you have multiple locations, there's an acute sensitivity to the per location cost, right? And so it was really important for us to hit this price point. As you said, it, it, this is sort of unheard of in terms of actual IT infrastructure that's serious server grade stuff. Um, but we think this is going to help make Azure Stack HCI approachable for everyone. OK. No, that's great. That's fantastic. I'm definitely going to have a look and talk to a couple of our customers with that. So where do customers go if they want to know more? Great question. So the, the good place to start first is Microsoft.com slash HCI. That's where you can find the catalog with all of the solutions from our partners, as well as links out to our documentation. 
And if you're interested in previewing the deployment workflow that I showed just now, you can actually do that today. It's available right now as part of Windows Admin Center version 1910. It's a free download. Uh, and you can find the documentation for that at aka.ms slash deploy HCI. OK. Oh, that's great. So thank you for being here, Cosmos. Thank you for having me. Thank you.